Let's bring in our guests now. And uh, Angela is, well, is still with us. Angela, thank you once again for staying there. Uh, GK Opa is also with us. Angela, what do you make of uh, the results? Clearly not what you expected, right? Uh, no, it wasn't what I expected at all. Um, but it was always a possibility that Donald Trump would win. Mm. And um, what do you make of his win? What, what, how, what does that mean for the American people and for yourself? Uh, for the American people and for the world, I think we're in for some dark days. Uh, I don't believe it's Donald Trump's objective to unite the country. None of his rhetoric was re uniting through the campaign. I think that uh, all the people that are naturalized citizens that have immigrated to the United States will be in for a big shock. Mm. Because if you listen to the words that he says, he doesn't just think that illegal, the sort of undocumented people, he thinks that people who are here on asylum or other things should be removed from the United States. I think that in the long run, uh, all the Americans that voted for Donald Trump uh, will regret it mm. very much. And I also believe that it's going to exacerbate climate change because he doesn't believe in climate change. He doesn't think it's real, but climate, uh, climate incidents are happening every day. I mean, there was just a huge uh, flood in Spain mm. that, that they received a year's worth of rain in one, in one day, and mm. it's still raining there. So I don't think this is a positive thing. And I think that that the Biden economy has been one of the best economies that we've seen in more than 30 years. And that we have a lot of people that for some reason listen to Donald Trump, despite the fact that in his first term, he actually, the only thing that he really accomplished was giving tax breaks to rich people and corporations. And that's what he'll do again. Right. So everybody that thinks it's going, the economy is going to improve, uh, they, they're incorrect. Okay. We will definitely come back to you for the question. And let me be, probably give you the question so you start thinking about it before I come back to you, which is that what happened for Kamala? She clearly was, it was a neck-to-neck -neck competition. It looked like she could make it. She didn't. What, in your estimation, happened? What are you picking from the grounds? We'll come to you for that answer. Let me also bring in the Republican um, supporter who is Ejike Okpa. He has uh, some Nigerian roots and has also joined us. Uh, Mr. Okpa, thank you once again for your time. Congratulations are in order, aren't they? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, to start with, how, how, how are you taking the news that your candidate, you, you spoke very highly of him yesterday, he finally has won. How did you take the news and what's happening in the camp of uh, the, the Republicans? <laughs> it, 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 it didn't surprise me. Yeah, I'm a nationalized American citizen. You know, whatever Angela says, she's wrong. She doesn't live in America. You know, I ran for mayor. I ran for Congress. I'm the first native African to run for mayor of a major city less than. So nobody's going to deport anybody, you know, who, who, who is legally here. Okay, I came to America legally. You know, I'm putting together. I'm putting together the first 25 story to be built in North America by African immigrants. Okay, it didn't happen because you know of Biden or anybody. So when people are saying what Trump is going to do, not not going to do, you know, it kind of be. She doesn't live here. So, but the point is that it's, it's water under the bridge. We don't know what's going to happen four years from now. So, we, you know, the, the election is over. You know, we know who the winner is. And, of course, you know, whoever, the president is going to deal with the Congress. Laws are going to be made. But, you know, <laughs> again, I'm just laughing because if I'm, this is my second time on your station. Two years ago, I called this. I said, nobody's going to be Trump. Kamala Harris was a bad candidate. She couldn't even stand up and answer questions. She's a default candidate in the sense that if the nomination had been thrown open, if Biden was truthful to her to the, to the party and allowed the normal nomination process to go, Kamala would never have won. She never would have beaten anybody in the party. When she ran the first time on her, well, she didn't even make a delegate. So, but the point is, look, this is over, okay? Let's just look ahead. America is going to stay be America. Anybody who comes here and do the thing the legal way, 
you know what? They're going to avail themselves of what America has to offer. What the are deportation. The... Mm. Yeah, you were talking about the deportation. It was one of the key issues I wanted to raise. So maybe conclude your thoughts on that for me. No, no, look, the deportation, however the number of millions, is going to be physically impossible to do it. It's going to consume a lot of resources to remove the people. So what's going to happen is what I have said to congressional members is for those who break into America illegally, we should deny them a permanent chance of becoming American citizens. They can have their green card and live here permanently. Well, that's what the green card gives you. But they should never have the rights to become citizens. We need to start punishing people who broke into any country because you know immigration is a right. And it's a privilege. It's, it's not a right. Mm. Okay, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't demand it because right. things are hard in your country. You want to go to another country and say you want to be here. Okay. If you want to come to America, come legally, and then you know you avail, avail yourself of the opportunities. What are your expectations of the new Trump administration in his first, at least the first hundred days? What do you perceive will be his key focus in you know now that he's returning to the Oval Office? Look, look, he said, look, like, the country needs to heal, but, you know, there's nothing to heal here. America, elections have always been contentious. We always say the things we say, but once you get into the Oval Office, you know, governing, you know, takes over. So the thing is, everybody's going to rally. Not everybody's going to like everybody. We don't look for angels in politics. We look for angles. We look for people who are going to get the job done. The first time he, he was in office, he got the job done. He was the only president to appoint three Supreme Court justices in, in four years, despite all the things they were trying on him. Trump is the only American who could stand everything that has been done to him, and he's still smiling. You know, my happiness in this process is that it destroyed Obama. People thought Obama had influence. Obama didn't have any influence. Everybody Obama endorsed never won. And then Biden, of course, we don't know. He doesn't even know who has won because he's mentally, you know, you know, deranged. He's, he's lost it. And then Clinton. So now what we're going to see is that the Democrats are going to start fighting each other mm. because they're angry. They are, they are disappointed. Kamala Harris didn't deliver. And again, you know, there's a God and it's always on the right in the right side, side of things. And, right. the, and, and the, the uh, Republicans are on the right side of things. I am just a letter. Mm. You know, I am so happy because, you know, tell. like I told you, I, I can tell, look at my shirt. Look at my shirt. I made it four years ago. I just went back to my closet and got it. Okay. If Trump had won the second term, right, he wouldn't have been so excited. Mm. So now he's, he's not acting with a new energy because right. he's not going to be a lame duck president. And so okay. I'm excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to what's going to happen. Okay. Oh Let God. me bring in, um, you know, in concluding this conversation, maybe, uh, Angela, your final thoughts. I asked what must have gone wrong for Kamala? What next for the Democratic Party? Um, I just want to address something before we move on to that question. Uh, the other guest, uh, he said, I don't live in America, so I don't know what I'm talking about. I am a natural born American who lived in America for most of my life, mm. and I still have friends, family. I go there frequently. Mm. Um, so I don't really think the fact that I'm, my husband and myself, we, have, we are in Germany because we served the United States Army. Mm. So right. please do not suggest that somehow we are disconnected and that we don't know what's going on in America. And we have helped our country directly. So, sorry, that's not really a thing, that, that we don't know what's going on. But anyway, back to, your question. back to your question. I think what went wrong is that America is, and Americans are easily beguiled by lies, because that's all that Donald Trump has done for the, for the, since he lies and racism and sexism, since he, he came down that escalator saying that he wanted to get rid of every Mexican. Mm. So you can, you can think that positive things are happening or going to happen, but they won't. And I think that what happened with, with Kamala is that um, the people, the people let her down. Mm. That's what I think. And I don't think she did anything wrong. Yeah. And I don't think that Joe Biden did anything wrong. And I think that we've had 
the most improved economy. We had the economy that's the envy of the world right now because we have lowered inflation. Uh, we've created thousands and thousands of jobs, hundreds of thousands of jobs, millions. Um, we've helped so many people with the Biden administration, mm. but we've lowered prescription drug prices for people. Um, but obviously what people prefer, right. in my opinion, is, is just to be misled, mm. to be promised things that won't happen. And it is possible. You're doubting, you're doubting that Donald Trump, people. you're doubting that Donald <laughs> Trump will deliver on his promise? He will not. Okay. The only promises that he will deliver on are deporting people. And I'm in Germany right now. Uh, and in Germany, we had a fascist government. Uh, remember World War II? Yeah. And they deported millions of people, too. It's not impossible, but it also involves a lot of violence. Right. All right. So finally and briefly, if you can, what's going to happen now for the Democratic Party? Twice you have brought candidates that are female, it looks as though the American people through their thumb do, uh, do not seem ready for a female candidate. Is that an, uh, a perception you agree with? And what's going to be happening now that the party is going back to opposition? Uh, we're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep fighting for the rights of women. We're going to keep fighting for the rights of Americans, uh, senior citizens and immigrants and whoever else is out there that needs help because Donald Trump, as I said, he didn't do anything that he promised in in the first administration. So right. I wouldn't expect anything to happen, but we're going to keep fighting as Democrats. Pleasure talking so. to you, Angela. Thank you so much for Thank making you very time much. to talk to us here on TV3 in Ghana. And we are your election command center. So if he has to do with politics anywhere around the world and it's of importance, we have it covered for you. Mr. EGK, in your concluding thoughts on the way forward, clearly there's going to be a big party, but after the party, reality sets in, you're the new president. What should we be expecting, especially from the new Trump administration? You know, I wish I could tell you, hey, look, hey, this is an election, it's over with, now we look forward to governing. And, and, and Trump is going to do what Trump can do. He's not going to do it he just uh, unilaterally. He's going to have the, to work with the Congress. We're angered. We have, you know, the House and the Senate coming back to the Republican Party. But remember, in his first term, you know, he had, he had both houses and things didn't go very well. But he's learned his lesson. Uh, you know, so whatever anybody's saying, I wish, you know, I'm not clairvoyant. But the fact that two years ago, when they started indicting him, read his house, you know, raided his house and all this other stuff, I say this is going to backfire. The American people always end up, you know, say, you know what, certain things are not right. You don't, you don't treat people that way. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to do all kinds of stuff. But look at it. So the Democrats are just going to go back, let them keep crying. You know, I don't have anything against them, but they are the ones, you know, the Democrat is a plantation party. Plantation is that they have some of them, they are, you know, you know shepherd, and they want to tell everybody, okay, this is the way you got to go. You look at all the entertainers and the athletes they brought to the table. Americans are not persuaded by those people. Americans are persuaded by people who believe in something, and we believe in this country. Right. If Angela doesn't like it, please stay back in Germany. We don't miss you. You know, Republican parties have taken over, and we're going to get this, this country right. Trump is the guy, and I said it in my earlier interview, Trump is triumphant. And that's the end of the story. Mr. Ejike Okpa, Your Excellency, thank you so much once again for your time and thoughts as always. And uh, he's a Republican and very elated that uh, Donald Trump, the Republican candidate, is president-elect of the United States of America. So we want to wrap up quickly the key things that must have worked for Donald Trump. Then, after that, we'll draw the similarities and parallels between what happened in the U.S. and what's likely or the, the similarities of what's happened in Ghana as well. So uh, beyond uh, racial and gender issues, Donald Trump promised to cut down taxes. He says, I pledge to stop taxing social security benefits for senior citizens. I consider this a cruel double taxation of retirees. And also promised that he was going to cut taxes on tips, right. which I think both candidates promised that. Yeah. But I was shocked at the number of people that 
were happy about the fact that they were cutting taxes on tips. Yeah. You've lived in the US. Yeah. How big is the conversation I about mean, tips? I mean, everywhere you go, I mean, it's almost become, it's like mandatory, yeah, you know, no, that you go to, you know, shop, you buy something, you want to give a tip. And even on those tips, you are, you know, taxed yeah, on taxed. it. So that's a big deal for a lot of people who, because there are lots of, you know, these shops and the small businesses and around, joints yeah. where people work and, and they receive these tips, you know. So it's a really good thing and a lot of people you can see are excited about it. And it's, of course, it's, it's a promise that cuts across both political parties. Yeah. But I mean, all I can say to this is this is really decisive. And you heard that woman, the one you just spoke to talk okay. about Trump being racist and uh, sexist yeah. and all that. At the end of the day, the people still said they Americans wanted him. Spoken. Yes. Right. So, yeah, those are the key subjects that um, Donald Trump campaigned on. And, you know, the issues of taxes are always connected to the economy and work. And from all the polls, economy, jobs were among the top three or the top five. And it looks as though everybody in America or those who voted believed the principle that of Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, it seems like Donald Trump could get the job done. That's why, or fixing the economy, that's why they gave him the mandate. Thank you very much, Pakwe Siasari, for your analysis with us here on TV3. This is still Elections 360.